sponsor's 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It is a another Monday night. It is nine o'clock. It is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. Now we do have a a special guest um, on tonight's show. He's not here. Um, he won't be live. Uh, well, he, he hopefully he's, he's live, um, but uh, he's he's obviously based in uh, Thailand for the time being, and and that is uh, Graham, or or most people know him as the Scot, um, the creator and and founder behind Siam Mods. Um, he is going to be giving us a if you like a a walkthrough on uh, on how he handles a lathe and I can tell you it's a damn sight better than my attempts. Um, I didn't realise that Graham actually uses uh, hand tools um, for making the tips so they're all they are actually all done by hand. I tried my hand at, at doing some this week um, as you'll see a little bit later with, with the same sort of material. Obviously on the metal lathe it's a damn sight um, harder as I found. Um, however, they are getting better. They are getting better. I got home tonight, and um, uh, you see this? Yeah, I'm, I've I made that one tonight. So that one was done in in about an hour. Um, but it's only after watching uh, watching Graham, um, to be honest, and seeing how he handles it, and you know the sort of pressures and this and that you can put on this material. Um, tonight, Mark is going to be, and and from popular request, the the mod maker, the, the mod maker, the mod holder that he made last week. Um, went down storm. He had some, some unanswered questions, I believe, um, from chat. Uh, so he's going to address some of those. And he will be making, uh, if you like, the accompanying um, juice holder for that tonight. Uh, very good stuff. Um, I'm going to crack on very, very shortly with Mark. Um, and then we'll go into the bit from, from Graham. I'm going to break it up over, over the, the evening as we do normally. Um, so sit back, enjoy, as, uh, as we go into Mark's first little bit. Now, a few people were disappointed at the end of last week's show that they didn't get to see the stand fully loaded with a load of itemizers and drip tips and whatever. And as I hate to disappoint, I thought I'd better show you it. So there you have it. Of course, one of the drip tips falls out. <laughs> the biggest problem you'll find. That's better is the variance in the sizes of drip tips There's, there is a massive difference between one drip tip and another quite often which is why it's a good idea to have quite a few drip tips handy so that you can match a drip tip to a particular device as you can see everything holds in nicely so i hope that's ha made you happy at the very least right on with the proper show now Now this week, before I get started, uh, I want to address a couple of things that came up in chat during last week's show that I wasn't able to answer as I wasn't around at the time. And the first is, I may have given the impression that it's harder to cut this with the Dremel uh, than it actually is. Uh, that's due to the fact I was using a blade which is completely worn out. Uh, unfortunately, it was the only one I had at the time. Uh, I've worn this one out making stands for the knees meet, and I've made rather a lot. And these are a disposable product, so you will want replacements, which I've now remedied. And I'll show you when I make this one. That is quite easy to use that blade. And the question came up related to that: of would it be easier to use a jigsaw? And from my experience, I'd say no. Uh, the jigsaw is quite a violent cutting blade. Uh, the movement up and down is quite severe and it has a tendency to rip at the plastic rather than cutting it. And if it catches, there is a, a very real danger that it's just going to shatter the plastic around it. And if I'm honest, you can't really get the fine control that you need to get a nice smooth curve with a jigsaw. So that's why I use the Dremel. So, out of the way, onto this week. I've been asked to make, if I could make, a stand for juice bottles. 
uh, specifically in this case 30 milliliter juice bottles. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, I've never tried anything like this before, but here we go. So what I'm intending to do is have a base and a raised platform above it with the holes cut in for the juice bottles to stand in. And I've worked out a pattern that will give four space for four bottles along the back, four bottles on the front, and one in the centre. And then I'm going to use these 8mm uh, diameter perspex rods. Uh, these are 50 millimetres, 50 millimetres, 50 millimetres uh, in length. I'm going to use three, but at this point I'm still not 100% certain of where the these are going to go. I'm planning on two at the back and one will be at the front along the centre line, but I'm not exactly certain until I've got all the holes cut out where this will go. So it's going to be a wait and see, I think. Uh, for this, uh, the juice bottles are 30 millimetres wide, so I'm going to be using this monster of a metric. Uh, step drill bit and taking it almost to the end which should be fun and uh, the main things I need to be uh, careful of with this is to make sure that the base and the top are the exact same shape so it looks right and that the holes for the pillars which will be drilled through both sheets so that they sit flush with the tops of the bottoms they have to match up exactly so I'm going to have to drill through from one to the other, so just to make it absolutely certain. So, that out of the way. First job is to cut out the holes. Now I'm going to be using a nice fresh blade with the mains rotary cutter because uh, this has got a better speed control and get a fine control over it. So I've set it the way I want it, so let's get a wing cut. And it'll cut off as easy as that. A little bit of loose plastic on it. And that'll be a nice clean edge, which won't take up too much time to sand down to a good surface. And as I've said before, be careful of the speed that you use, because if the speed gets too high, it just starts melting through, and you'll lose the straight edge, and it'll just be a mess, basically. So, I'm going to cut out the rest of these. I'm sure you don't want to sit there watching me do that all day. I'll be back when they're all done. Right, so we are back in the room once again, and I am ecstatic this week because we do have Graham the Scott uh, from Cyan Mods joining us. The reason I have all this stuff laid out for you today. Um, this is pretty much what we're going to be talking about. Um, these are effectively, if you like, a, uh, a stone pen blank um, that I picked up only after watching um, what Graham did. He made it look so damn easy, which you will see coming up very, very shortly. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. He made it look so easy. Um, Graham, I love you, but I hate you. Um, 
it also come with some of this, which is the uh, micro mesh uh, sort of sheets of. So we've got a full set of these. Um, where you can see I've been working a little bit with one of them in in the uh, in the metal lathe. Now in the metal lathe, uh, as Graham has said, these are not good. Um, realistically, you you got to work them by hand. Um, they are an absolute pain in the bum to work with and, and by hand is by far the best way of working with them but I do have something that I've made with this um, they are really nice finishes and, and if I flip them over you sort of get roughly I don't know this probably play havoc with the uh, with the light but you can sort of see the sort of finishes that you can achieve um, it's probably going to go yellow and all sorts um, nice stuff yeah nice stuff but a pain in the bum if you're wondering I picked this up from eBay and this full set of blanks was um, 28 pounds which is not the cheapest in the book and I my wife is, didn't listen to that um, but yeah 28 quid um, so quite expensive I would say now I played with this bit what I'm going to do, let me come down ever so slightly. Oh, there we go. Today, I actually, after watching Graham's videos in great, great, great depth, I made this. It's taken me most of the day um, to get it done, to get it polished, this and the other. You will see what I mean when I say Graham makes this look so easy. Um, you know, it's taken me a long, long, long time to make this, but I quite like it. Nice and stumpy. You want to see what Graham does? Uh, incredible. But that effectively has come from this, and you can sort of see, you know, the similarities where it's come from. And after a good polish and this, that, and the other, it's come out well. I've got a fair few more left in there as you can see but I can see how it is far easier or not easier it makes it look bloody easier um, on a hand lathe uh, using it in the metal lathe it is a nightmare I was screaming and I've still got some blue stuff stuck under my finger now um, I was screaming for hand tools today with all that said very very shortly I'm sure we will see the master at work. I'm going to pop away, we will come back in two. Okay. Right, this is going to be my first attempt doing a video. I'm going to try now and show you how to make a stone drip tip. I'm going to choose this malachite. It's hard to know exactly how it's going to turn out, what's inside, but I've got one set up. Hopefully we'll get something nice inside. I'm going to attempt to do it just using the basic of tools. The more complex tips need more tools. I'm going to try and do the whole lot just with this one tool. It's a carbide tip. Simple parting tool. I reckon we should get started. See how we go. I'm going to switch off the camera. I don't want to get it damaged with this chips flying off of here. I'll get back once we once we get it smooth. Okay, all the chips gone now. It's looking good. I'm just gonna make this probably the most simple shape I can using just this one tool because of video purposes. Um this is not a video on how to do it, it's the way I do it, so Let's get started.
Again, one of the reasons I chose this, the material is very, very soft to work with. Some of the dark colors, the black and the blues, probably take 10 times this amount. Different tooling, and a lot more patience. A few accidents along the way too. The more I do with this, the less I have to do with sanding. I'll give it a bit of a longer neck. Because that neck's too wide, this is what I like to do. Take a parting tool. Just makes room for the tool to get in here and not, not damage the rest of the, the blank. I normally do these in batches so I've got the same tool in handy. This one I'll just try and do for the video. A bit quicker than normal but you'll get the idea and everyone will be making clip tips. Right that's the basic shape. Now what I need to do is get it set up to drill a hole for the stainless steel 510 connector. It's not bad, we've got a little bit of an eye here, looks nice. Alright, I'll get set up the drill and I'll be back. Alright, set up the drill in place. This is a 510 adapter I use. It's got to drill it far enough to get it in. I normally use small drill, medium, then up to the size I need, but because this material is relatively soft, I can use the the drill size I need direct, just need to take it nice and easy. Heats the danger with ease. Right, let's get this hole done. I've got a mark on my lathe here that tells me how far I've gone in. Almost there, huh? Okay, that should be it, right? Try and keep this on camera before I probably can't. No. Um I'll try. Okay. I'm just have to give this a little fit. Okay, that fits good. What I need to do now is get set up for... What I like to do is I'll try and give this as much sanding and polishing as I can. Once this connection's in there, it's real hard to try and get right in there, so I'll try and do as much as I can now before I cut it off and turn it around and get the top finished. So I'll get set up for the, the sanding and cleaning of this bottom part. Be back with you shortly. And there we go. I was a little uh, a little hesitant there on the button. Um, every time I've watched those videos, um, time and time again over, over this weekend, um, obviously editing them and and looking for, you know, help and advice. He, Graham, you make that look so easy. Um, as I said, I love you, but I hate you. Um, it's a damn sight harder than it looks. Um, it really is. And and I I've been playing a little bit with the blanks that I got and it's true what Graham says there that the heat um, generation on the, on those uh, I've warped a few I think I, I was talking to Graham earlier and I think I've started six and finished two um, not easy at all um, but made you know made to look easy um, by the master um, and it's a pleasure to to have this and, and for Graham to do that for tin your tip um, I think it, it much needed you know you, you don't want 
to see me and Mark. Well, you may do, I don't know, every week. Um, so as we said, we are looking for people, we are looking for things like that. If you are out there and, and you are a mod maker and you fancy sharing um, on, on Vapor Trails TV in something that you make, um, let us know. Um, stunning, uh, first ad break and we'll be back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in the room um, once again. Um, if you hear noises, uh, I do apologise. I think I do have a couple of foxes um, trying to get fruity up the side of the shed. Uh, <laughs> just run out and, and give them a kick. Um, so yes, you may hear screams and it's nothing else other than the foxes. Um, so moving on rapidly, um, we are going to get into our next little bit from Mark on, on his juice stand. Um, and then we've got another little, uh, the, you know, the final bits uh, from, from Graham. What I'm going to do very, very quickly um, there is a certain thing happening very, very soon. I think it's the 29th, and this is it. So there we go, the knees meet on the 29th of this very month. Um, I think 90% of the team, or 99.9% .9 of the team uh, are going to be there. Um, unfortunately, I can't make it. Um, it's it's one of those things, it's, it's long, 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 long way for me. Um, and uh, and um, my wife has to uh, be at work at 5 o'clock on a Sunday morning. So she would probably kill me um, if I did attend. Let's crack on with the videos. Let's get on with uh, Mark's second little bit. And then we'll go into the next bit from Graham, the Scott, the man that is Simon. Now, as you'll see, I've cut out both the pieces now. And I took this opportunity to sand down 
the edges so that they all match pretty much and there's maybe it's half a mil difference uh, I got them the same way by sticking a bit of tape over both of the ends which I knew were square uh, because I haven't touched these either the original sides of the board so I taped them together and then just sanded across the top and the bottom with them in place to get them to match up so they're close enough especially when you consider they're going to be separated you won't be able to tell so I don't need that for the moment as the next job I need to do is drill the holes for the bottles I'm going to do that first so I can work out where the holes for the columns are going to go exactly so I need my 2 mil drill bit to drill all the pilot holes and I apologise if this looks a bit confusing as to what's marked out where but I, over the course of laying this out I've tried a couple of different positions and just basically by putting bottles on different points trying to work out what's going to fit and what won't so I've marked out there with the numbers 1 to 4 and then to 8 there the central one what I think will work but I won't know until I'm finished I think so Touch the ones for the columns because they need to go in later. So, onto this rather large bit, which only just fits into this drill. So, I'll start off with the central hole. seem to be working nearly as well as the other ones I've got. I'm going to have to look at getting this sharpened or something. But you get the idea. I'll drill this out and I'll be back when I finish these all. And I'm back and as you'll see I haven't quite finished drilling the holes out yet. And this is because I've run into a little bit of a problem. You see I've got the full size 32mm hole here which will fit a bottle through nicely no problem at all these I can't get to the right size because I have failed to take into account a few very important things the size for one obviously um, when I planned this out I made all the measurements from the edges but I had to sand down the edges to match up the top and the bottom and obviously cutting as well it's, you can sometimes wander across the line slightly so I've ended up far too close so there's nothing I can do with these two holes 
they're finished with. They will take a 20ml bottle, no problem. So you now have space for two 20ml bottles on the end. The rest I've I'm trying re-drilling pilot holes further in from the edge to allow for it and drilling through them instead of the original ones and that seems to be working. I'm just waiting on the drill charging up to finish these off because drilling holes of this size is also not very easy with a cordless drill at the very least and a mains drill would probably be too fast for the plastic and end up melting or ripping. So it's just a slow, laborious process you've got to go through. But we will get there shortly with a modified design it appears. Let's see how we go. Okay, now set up for the sand and polishing. Firstly, I'm going to go from 150 grit to 400 grit with the sandpaper. Uh, the more time spent with this, the more time spent with this, the less, the less time later on with the final polish. I'm going to do it quick for the video, but just to be aware of that. Then there's these nine grits of micro mesh. Go through one of them at a time. And when I'm doing the bottom, it's only the bottom I really want to do because after that connection it's going to be hard once I finish the top end the whole lot gets this all once again it's a boring procedure but if you want to get a glass like finish it's what needs to be done right it's going to be a bit noisy switch it on and get this started start with a 150 This will be boring. Gets all the, the machine marks off and gets it the way you want it. Just got my wife's underwear down here to protect the <laughs> protect the lathe bed from water. That's me on uh, 240 grit. And you can see how quick I'm being, and that's. It'll probably need done again after the video, but you get the idea. 320 grit. You can see already how it's starting to foam up, and that's just, that's just finer, finer bits of the stone coming off. Finally, the 400 grit. And the reason I'm doing it with wet is, again, heats the heats the enemy for stone or acrylic or or most materials. And it doesn't take long to heat this up. I want to try and keep it moving and not leave it. If I leave it like this, you'll get the you'll get the line. So, especially with the micro mesh, the more I move it, the more or less less likely to get these lines. Won't be able to see what it looks like quite yet. Or I'll put some water on have a look before I start micro mesh. Yeah it's gonna come out nice. Right get on this micro mesh. I'll go through these nine, there's no need to video every single one, but um, once I've started, I'll switch off the camera, come back once I've done it, get on to the next stage. Okay, that's me uh, just finishing the last 12,000 grit micro mesh. You see, this is only the first, the first time we'll do this, just try and get the bottom and spend all the time on the bottom to try and, try and get this part beside the connector done. Give it a little dry off.
Oh, look, see how it is. Still a lot of work to go, but so far looking good. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to part this off. Um, and I'm going to use this one, just to save time. I don't want to set up the video a second time. This one's just the same stage. It's been cut off, and this is now being secured in there. Same deal. Same material, different shape. I'll go get this part it off. It won't take a sec. Might take some body parts too, but we'll give it a go. Just use this two mil parting tool. And that's it. Rather good. Okay, I'll get set up to get the top started. Sorry we're jumping about. I'll be back soon. And there we go. We are back again. Um, just to uh, sort of address uh, a couple of questions um, that popped up in chat. Um, and if you're watching this on the replay, obviously you don't have the benefit of uh, of the answers that have been given. Um, people were saying effectively how much pressure is applied with the with the micro mesh. Now, I was quite shocked when I first got the um, micro mesh through. Uh, I've got it in sheet format. I'm thinking, what the hell is that going to do? It's almost like a, uh, feels virtually like a rubber. Um, I suppose that's what it is. I don't know. Never yet, never had none before and until um, Saturday. Uh, what effectively Graham is saying is, is for the sanding, and I've found this as well, um, you put a bit more pressure on when you're actually doing the sanding as opposed to the uh, to the micro mesh, if you like. The micro mesh is effectively, or how I've used it is, is like a the polishing um, and obviously working right the way through the uh, the grades people have asked as well where can you get the micro mesh um, I believe Graham has posted in chat that that is available via Axminster um, I got mine uh, as a complete set with the blanks and a selection of micro mesh um, through eBay um, so you can grow it through there as well um, I'm not sure whether there are different qualities I know mine has on on the uh, if you like the finer grits, it's not been as as great. Um, it might be because I'm putting a bit too much pressure on. I'm learning. Um, I'm learning as well. Um, I don't know. I may well um, <laughs> show you how a complete spanner um, does a tip next week. I, I don't know. Uh, we we may well see. Um, a totally different process in the in the metal lathe. Um, I need I need a wood lathe now. I'm thinking um, most definitely. I might have to convince the wife. Um, let me pop away into a second air break. I'll come back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors Ten Year Tip with Gary Dibley. again um, unfortunately the foxes have continued humping um, throughout the entire 
show so far. Um, I've gone out and given them another kick and thrown water on them. Um, so hopefully they will disappear for another 10 minutes. Um, I'm hoping they, they disappear long enough for, for this bit. Um, yes, as we were saying, yeah, we, we are halfway through or, or nearly... God, it's time's moving on. I must stop waffling and, uh, and get on. Um, the one thing that we did see this week was a new show uh, to Vapor Trails TV, which follows on from... Uh, Marco show tomorrow, um, which is vapor scene, obviously, um, and uh, and that was broadcast, I believe, at about quarter to ten. Little trailer. moment um so tomorrow night we do have uh vapor scene with marco followed by by the new show for our our german viewers i believe um on wednesday night vtt or the talk program um with dave dorm on uh thursday night the haze hour um saturday we are still awaiting the return of mr sutton who is uh, still frantically um working on on a new set of videos for the smoking without fire campaign on Sunday, Dave's tackle box. Let's get in to Mark's final bit of his juice holder, and uh, and we'll round things up with with the final part of uh, of Graham's video. All right then. After what I can only describe as some severely hard stopping moments, I eventually managed to drill out 32 mm holes for those seven and the two smaller ones still for them. Now, I don't know what you're able to see, but some of these holes come incredibly close to the edging and to each other. I've taken out a massive amount of this Perspex, and I was expecting it to just crack at any moment. I don't think I'll be making another one of these after I've done this one. This is definitely going to be a one-off for me. So. You can see it's made a real mess of the surface. But I've drilled pilot holes in this for the three posts. I've got them in a position I'm happy with. So I need to drill it all the way through. So making sure that I line up the two of them in the correct orientation. Finding the drill. I just need to drill through this pilot hole into the other one. Into the other surface. I That's a pilot hole drilled. So now, as I'm using an 8mm wide rod, I need to make an 8mm hole. So, this metric step, I've marked out the 8mm already. So I've taped the two bits together just to make sure that they don't move and I need to try and drill straight through this. that hopefully now we should have something I can work with. Right. Move all of this. You get a better idea of the pattern now. That does look rather nice. Of course, these will not actually fit through as they're pretty close to the size. I just 
just slightly off. So I'm going to need to sand these out slightly just to clean off the edges and get them through. So I've sanded off the edges for all the holes, including these three, so they're now the right size and these ones. So it's just a matter of putting it together. So I want to fix these so that they're flush with the top, so any dif slight difference in size will be hidden by the bottom bits. That's just going to be a matter of push them into place. I'm just doing it by feel. They are flush, and the moment of truth time. Putting them into the bases. So after a bit of fiddling around, that's them all into position into a level that I'm happy with. This one's not quite straight, it's off at a slight angle, but it fits. That's all that matters. So to fix them all in place, I'm going to be using some of this, which is a plastic weld suitable for this type of material and what it'll do is basically melt the two parts together it's more of a uh, what's the word I'm looking for solvent that's all it's more of a solvent than a glue so it's just a case of running a bead around the edge and it will be soaked into the gap This stuff sets very quickly, it dries off very quickly, I should say. And leaves an incredibly strong bond from the practice I've had with it. It's every bit as strong as the original material, I think. So, I shall do that. I want to do it on the base the same, and I need to do the underside all the way around to give it a good firm seating. I'll be back when it's all glued up and I'll show you the finished product. So there you go, it's had literally seconds to dry and basically once it all evaporates off that's it set. So now I need to add some feet and probably the best place is over the three posts as it just cleans up that area. That's complete and those are the wrong bottles. No, it's the wrong holes. I'm really nervous there for a minute. So they have seven devices, eh, seven bottles in. There's a 20 ml bottle there. And just for the heck of it, you can stick your mod in there as well if you really want to. But there you have it. One nice, quick, simple juice stand. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. Alright, now I'm almost set up to do this. What I've got is a uh an old cartomizer, just for grip, put this in there, if I tighten it here, it's got no way of moving and it should be centered. Now we'll get a center drill, stick that in this end, bound the camera while I'm at it. This will also give you like a drip well of the more deeper I go, the wider it's going to go. Excuse me, it's just getting awkward with the camera there. Let me see how...
Again, it doesn't take long to build up heat and most of the stone. maximum for dripping so use a four mil drill so it's a little bit awkward with the camera here oh flashing it again right get this set up Throw this all the way through to the 510 connection. So it's a little bit awkward. The camera is set up right above where my Right, that should be it. Okay, now it's just a case of getting back and set back up for for sanding and polishing the top part then the final clean off alright I'll get set up again get my wife to get her knickers off and cover the bed here be back with you soon alright that's me set up what I tend to do is I'll get the roughest grip rather than use the tools I think this is a better finish I round the top as much as I can. Different tops, some you can give a lip and again that's more tool than required. I'm just Biggest pain in the back side is getting getting in the drip well. Is if I could just make it flat. There we go, see. Again, this is a I go through this with every grade of grit, which is gonna be boring for anybody watching. So I'll go through all these grits and then through all the um, micro mesh again and then I'll do the, the final polish and clean and come back at the end when it's done see you soon alright that's me finished I'm not going to go through the polishing process got to keep some in secret but um, basically just the more work you put into it the better a finish you'll get so I'm going from a simple pen blank going through the process not so hard especially this material getting to the final hope I'll show up well on camera there was no no animals hurt on this video and it wasn't really my wife's underwear just in case someone wants to send me a PM but that can easily be arranged small fee but there you go hope I've made it look easy hope more people 
attempt to make their own. Simple, stone drip tip. Thank you. My first and probably last video. Bye. And there we go. Um, and as I said, I made that look so incredibly easy, um, both Mark and Graham um, tonight. Incredible stuff from both of you guys. And uh, it did give me, if you like, a little bit of, uh, of time off this weekend. Um, I'd like to say it did, but it didn't because uh, these, these shows... Although I, you know, I've read a couple of comments recently that why why we only do uh, an hour show, um, the, the work that goes in um, to to put in an hour uh, is incredible, um, and I'm sure Graham after after filming, uh, you know, f f for us and and Mark will tell you the same. The amount of work that goes in and and the editing etc that that needs to be done behind it and then piecing it together and then doing it, it takes a lot. If some if yeah if if <laughs> If it was a two-hour show, I would probably die. Um, as I say, I had a couple of cock-ups um, along the way when when I was following. That stuff um, can be a pain. Um, I tried copying. It's going to be difficult with the light, but I tried copying grams, and you can see I still have a drill bit stuck in there. Um, so it's very, very, very tricky stuff to work with. Made to look very, very easy by by Graham. Um, and uh, and really the, the aim there is dropping um, is to get you guys hopefully to, to have a crack um, you know you don't necessarily need um, a lathe although it does help um, but there are you know if you've got a, a drill you can get a little uh, a little lathe uh, attachment for your drill that may well do it I don't know um, but there we go um, with all that said I, I must thank um, both Mark and Graham um, for working for for us tonight and putting those videos together um, it has been a pleasure as usual I'm sure this show uh, this particular one is going to be viewed time and time again I know I will be um, and I'll be cutting my face out it's been emotional once again guys um, thank you very much it is time for myself to say good night Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.